Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday morning to you. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. We're in the midst of a thematic study of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and Paul's doctrine of the resurrection. We, we are not going verse by verse. We are going uh, theme by theme by theme, uh, etc. And it's been so far an absolutely fascinating study. I appreciate the wonderful comments that I've uh, had from so many of you. In our last video, we examined what Paul said, that the resurrection would be at the last trumpet. Now, I've suggested to you, and I, this is so incredibly important. In the context of 1 Corinthians 15, we must view the reference to the trumpet not in some unconnected manner. Now, I shared with you in Numbers chapter 10, there were about five different reasons in Israel's history, Israel's culture, for the sounding of the trumpet. You know, you've got a call to war, you've got a call to assembly, etc. Well, one of those very distinctive, very powerful reasons for the sounding of the trumpet was related to the feast days. You find that in Exodus 23, Leviticus chapter 23. And we absolutely cannot overlook that. We cannot or ignore it in the context of 1 Corinthians 15 because Paul twice, twice directly alludes to the harvest. Christ became the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep, died before him. Christ was the first fruit. Afterward, those who were his at his coming. Then comes the end. Folks, that's harvest imagery. So when Paul then, after twice introducing the subject of harvest, then says that the resurrection comes at the sounding of the last trumpet, he is bringing the mind of his Jewish readers, those familiar with the Torah, the Tanakh, directly focused on Israel's feast days. Now here's what you need to know. The trumpet was sounded to announce the last three feast days. All of them, but specifically the last three. Rosh Hashanah, which happened in Tishri, okay, was called the Feast of Trumpets. It is directly and inseparably linked with the day of of atonement. In some rabbinic sources, the Day of Atonement was viewed as the completion of, the consummation of Rosh Hashanah. And then you have at the last, and this complex of feasts were viewed together. They're distinct, yet they are together. But then you have the harvest the Feast of Sukkot. That's the Feast of Ingathering. It's the Resurrection. Now, here's what's so critical about this, folks. We have Paul affirming, in no uncertain terms, that the harvest had already begun. Christ was the first fruit. He was the first of the harvest. The harvest had already begun. Is it not just a little bit disingenuous? And, and please follow me here. That Christ appeared at the end of the age. End of what age? He appeared at the end of the old covenant age of Israel. He did not appear at the end of the Christian age. He appeared at the end of the age to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He was raised from the dead in that age. Oh, I know people claim that the Old Covenant age ended at the cross, but that's simply false. Has no merit to it whatsoever. Christ was raised from the dead at the end of the Old Covenant age. He was the first fruit at the time of the harvest. The end. You see, Sukkot is at the end. That's what's so significant. Pentecost is first fruit. Harvest is at the consummation. So now we have 
Paul using this imagery. And so I want to ask you a question to consider. If Christ was the first of the first fruit, he was the first of the harvest. And his resurrection was at the end of the old covenant age. Are we supposed to believe that the harvest is at the end? pardon me, is at the end of a totally different, unrelated age? Those are two different ages, folks. Two different concepts. It was the old covenant age that had to be harvested, brought to its consummation. The new covenant age has no end. Thus, when Paul, speaking of the first fruit as Christ... Then those who are Christ at His coming, then comes the end. That's the end of the harvest. The harvest of the old covenant age of which Christ was the first. But the new covenant age has no end. So the sounding of the last trumpet heralds the imminent consummation of Rosh Hashanah atonement Sukkot. We cannot extrapolate that harvest imagery 2,000 years beyond the first fruit without violating the imagery. First fruit means harvest has begun. Look, you need to get a copy of my book, The Resurrection of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 2, Fulfilled or Future. You will absolutely love the material in here. It will challenge you to be sure, but you will be absolutely amazed at how powerful the evidence is that the resurrection was in AD 70. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, order the book. Be sure to include a note. Send me a note, an email that says, Don, I ordered the resurrection book on Daniel 12. I will refund your shipping, saving you $5. Well, we've got a lot more on this sounding of the trumpet, the harvest, the time of the end, proving the resurrection was in AD 70. So we'll see you on the flip side.